everyone, today I want to look at the harmonic series as represented mathematically by Fourier transforms. Try to make sense of how the patterns of frequency and vibration create qualitative structures that can be understood mathematically and clearly also felt musically. This here is the harmonic series up to the ninth partial. We can go through these one by one. We start, of course, with just a regular sine wave, and then we add in the subdivisions of that harmonic series represented by the one half, which is an octave, the fifth, which is one third, and then a fourth, and a fifth, which is the major third, the sixth, which is repetition again of the fifth, and the seventh, the septimal natural seventh, the eight, which again, just an octave, and finally the nine, which is the major whole tone, second. And what you really see is how when all of them are moving together, it amplifies the signal by a ton. And when they're all sort of going apart from each other, it sort of loops around somewhere in the middle. Just bask in the beauty of this soundscape and its patterning. We can zoom in here and really look at the path that these waves are taking. Those are going to be combining together to form this structure. So that's the Fourier transform of the harmonic series. It's absolutely beautiful. It sounds like a lot of information and it looks like a lot of information. Next, I want to take a look at the major triad, which is formed between harmonics 4, 5, and 6. Here it is represented in the harmonic series. And here it is isolated by itself. And we can see by starting with the interval of a major third, that is the four to five. This is the interval structure. And it's Fourier transform. We can add the minor third, there it is, represented in its Fourier transform. And then we can do one of the four to six, which will be a fifth, which looks like this. And then we can combine these together. So here's our major third chord with its Fourier transform. And then the subdivisions of that Fourier transform between all of the intervals within it. Again, we have something very beautiful here. You can see where they depart and go in different directions and where they meet up partially. And the cycle pattern that it has together as a whole. The oscillations go on a little bit of a journey together and we can see them weaving around each other and departing and meeting back up. Here we have the minor triad. This one takes much longer to actually cycle through. All the way to here. 
again, let's start with just the minor third and its Fourier transform. You can see it cycles around here. And then we can look at the major third above it with its Fourier transform. And that one we can see cycles up even sooner here. And while these both cycle up pretty quickly, they're off from one another, and therefore, the chord has this much more spaced out and longer pattern that we have to go through a longer trial, a longer set of off points, a rougher ride in order to get back to the agreement. Next, we have the lovely diminished chord of the fifth, sixth, and seventh harmonics. Again, let's look at it component by component. Here's the Fourier transform of the three notes. It's composed of a minor sixth here. And we can see that linking back together with itself. A septimal minor third, which again here links back up with itself, which leaves us a septimal tritone seven over five, and this is its Fourier transform. See, it has these opposite patterns here. It's almost as if it's contrary to itself half the time. So then again, all together, this is the pattern we get. Lastly, I want to look at the septimal minor triad. Here again is the complete transform. And we'll start with the component parts. The septimal minor third of seven over six. The septimal ma super major third of nine over seven. And of course, the fifth of nine over this Fourier transform as a whole with these sub transforms shaping it as well by the individual components.